Hello everyone, I am Dr. Niyati Mistri, second year resident of, of radio diagnosis at Vithara VK Parking Medical College and Hospital Ahmednagar. So my topic today for a paper presentation is evaluation of obstructive uropathy using CT urography. Coming on to the aims and the objective is to discuss the current role of urologic imaging in evaluation of patients with obstructive uropathy. Identifying the key imaging features of urothelial diseases at the CT urography and the purpose of this study is to comprehensively review the role of CT urography in evaluation of uh, urinary tract obstruction, depiction of complex congenital or post-surgical urinary tract anatomy and any clinical scenarios where comprehensive evaluation of urinary tract is needed. So coming on to the introduction, obstructive uropathy can be defined as a blockage of urinary drainage, of urine drainage from uh, the kidney, ureter or bladder. There are many types of obstructive uh, uropathy. However, the most common causes include the stones in the kidney, that is nephrolithiasis, uro ureterolithiasis, that is stones in the ureter or anywhere in the urinary tract, that is urolithiasis. Other causes of obstructive uropathy include health conditions such as pregnancy, prostate cancer in males, retroperitoneal fibrosis, spinal cord injury, uh, then ureteral structures, congenital anomalies, etc. CT urography has essentially become superior to the intravenous uh, urography as the first line imaging modality since it has uh, more accuracy and sensitivity, particularly for the imaging of hematuria. Major advantages of CT urography is that it is not only superior in visualizing of in visualization of the urinary tract, but also assessment of adjacent structures and other organs of the abdomen where intravenous uh, urography fails. CT urography provides a detailed anatomical depiction of each of the major portions of the urinary tract. Then, these are the phases that we use for CT urography. First, we take a plain scan. Then after 30 seconds of contrast injection, we take a corticomedullary phase. Then after 100 seconds of the injection, we take Contrast injection, we take nephrogenic phase and after 8 minutes, we take excretory phase. So here we can see this is the normal appearance of three phases of CT urography provided for the references. Image A is a uh, non-contrast axial image through the kidneys where no renal calcification or high uterinated masses are noted. Image B is of nephrogenic phase showing symmetrical parenchymal enhancement without any parenchymal mass lesion. Then the image C is excretory phase through the kidney showing symmetrical excreted contrast in bilateral renal pelvises. Then symmetrical contrast opacification of the ureters are noted at the level of the bladder. Then image D, the coronal reformatted images of excretory phase image. And image E is the excretory phase axial image at the level of the ureteral insertion at the bladder. Then coming on to the methods and material, the study includes all the patient being referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis of, or, uh, of our tertiary care hospital for the CT urography with clinical suspicions of clinical suspicion of obstructive uropathy. Informed written consent of the participating individuals were taken. Detailed history was taken. Then CT urography was done using Philips 16 slice CT machine. Triphasic images were obtained, which includes the non-contrast enhanced and the delayed images in axial, societal and coronal planes. Afterwards, through examination of the images was done, a DICOM viewer was used and the study was done in random 46 patients coming for the uh, CT urograph. This is the machine that we use, that is Philips 16 slice CT. Coming on to the cases, this is the case number one where we can see this is a CT urographic reformatted coronal image showing a right-sided duplication, duplicating collecting system. Image B is a reformatted image of CT urogram demonstrating a duplicate, a duplicate collecting system on the right side with two ureters. At the insertion of the right ureter, there is a secular correction of contrast characteristic of a urethrosy. Then image C is actual CT uh, urography image shows right double collecting system. Sorry, the net is a little slow. Coming on to case number two. This is actual CT urography images showing horseshoe shaped kidney. A is unannounced image. B is new nephrogenic phase which shows multiple cystic lesions throughout the renal parenchyma. 
Coming on to the case number three, this is the CT urography axial unenhanced image showing moderate dilatation of the left renal pelvis and calysis, secondary to, to the clinking of the uh, proximal ureter, and B is the coronal excretory phase image showing delayed enhancement of the left renal parenchyma as compared to the right. Coming on to case number four, this is the axial CT urography image showing mild hydronephrosis with tiny intrarenal non-obstructive calculus. And B image shows axial image showing the left distal ureteric calculus. This is a reconstructed image showing bilateral multiple intrarenal calculi of variable sizes with mild left-sided hydronephrosis secondary to the distal ureteric calculus. Case number five is the CT urography image showing the left uh, intrarenal non-obstructive calculus with, with proximal uh, ureteric calculus causing moderate left hydronephrosis and hydroureter proximal to the calculus. C is the axial image, uh, CT axial image showing a large vesicle calculus and D is a reconstructed image showing the above findings. Case number six, this is CT urography image showing axial unenhanced image showing the left gross hydronephrosis and with thinning of the cortex. B is the actual nephrogenic phase showing gross hydronephrosis again. C is the actual delayed phase imaging showing normal right kidney and delayed excretion of the left. D is the 3D image showing uh, left-sided gross hydronephrosis secondary to the proximal ureteric uh, structure. Coming on to the results, this is a gender-wise uh, distribution of the patients. In the present study, the female Correspondence was uh, seen in about 31 uh, patients were male, 15 were, fem uh, 15 were females. Male to female ratio was 2.06 is to 1. This is the pie diagram showing the gender-wise uh, gender distribution of the patients. This is the age-wise distribution of the patient where majority of the patients were in the age group of 25 to 60 and followed by the age group of 51 to 75, which were 43%. Coming on to the distribution of the patient according to the shape of the kidney, about sorry, 93.5% of the patients showed maintained reniform uh, shape of the kidney. However, one showed distorted kidney and about 4.3% cases showed horseshoe shaped kidneys. This is the distribution of the patient according to the filling defects observed in the kidney, about 76% patient had no filling defect in the renal uh, pelvic lysis system. However, it was observed in only 24% of the patient. Then the number of ureters which were, which were involved in uh, then the majority of the patient had single ureter in about 98% while we observe a double ureter involvement in single patient out of uh, 46 patients. Then this is the distribution of patients according to the ureteral and the urinary bladder filling defect. 24 patients uh, showed the ureteral filling defect while 2 patients showed filling defect in urinary bladder. This is again the distribution of patients according to the size and the shape of the calculus. Out of 46 patients, 30 patients showed calculus in the urinary system. The calculus was of variable size and shape. 20% showed calculus ranging from 1.1 to 2 centimeters followed by five patients showing the calculus size ranging from 2.1 to 3 centimeters. Then 93% of the patient amongst the positive ones for the calculus showed a round calculus and the rest 7% showed stack on shape calculus. Then this is the distribution of the patients according to the location of the calculus. Most common location of the calculus was the ureter, which was observed in 19% of the patients, followed by the intrapelvic calculus in 7%. Four patients showed calculi which were intrarenal, uh, which were intrarenal, and PUJ calculus and intravesical calculus were observed in single patient respectively. Then this is the distribution according to causes for obstructive uropathy. Most common uh, pathology causing obstructive uropathy was the ureteric calculus observing 30% of the patient followed by ureteric structure followed by 11%, uh, 11 patients, that is 23%. Again, distribution of the patient according to the HU value. HU value of the calculus was seen in the range of 650 to 1,700. Eight patients showed HU value of 1,401 followed by 1,001 to 1,100, 1,000. 201 to 1306 patients. 
coming on to the discussion then obstructive uropathy is defined as a narrowing of the uretic uh, tract necessitating elevation of the proximal pressure to enable the uh, urine flow the city urography examination was able to diagnose the cause and the level of obstruction beginning from the intrapelvic obstruction to the pubic obstruction in our studies the cause of obstruction was the uh, urinary tract stones which represented 65 0.21% of all the patients second most common cause of obstructive uropathy was the uretic structure then the uh, ct urography enabled the detailed evaluation of obstructive uropathy crucial disease characteristics characteristics causing it and differentiating between the urinary calculi and other pathological processes such as structure secondary to iatrogenic procedure of uretic involvement in the metastasis cervical cancer in our study we were able to suggest the chemical composition of the diagnosed calculus with the help of measuring house fill units most of the cases with urinary tract calculus were advised ct urography in the presence of hydronephrosis detected by ultrasonography examination or non conclusive ibo examination ct urography with high spatial resolution and multiband reconstruction is able to diagnose the site and the cause of obstruction and is most in most cases is uh, also provide the functional information about the kidney which is important in the in the decision making of making for management then coming on to the conclusion with the introduction of ct urography it is possible to accurately image the urinary tract non invasively very easily and in very less time it aids to the study of anatomy which depicts the uh, which depicts the normal anatomic variations pre operatively and to study the pathologies hence based on our cross sectional observer uh, study the following conclusions can be made ct urography serves as an accurate and a non invasive imaging methods for evaluation of urinary tract and uh, anatomy and pathology it is also very helpful in pre operative evaluation of urinary tract anatomy and variations or any obstructions or functioning of the kidneys then ct urography was found to be very sensitive and specific in finding the level of obstruction and the cause of obstruction then ct urography was uh, again useful as there was no artifact due to the bowel gases or overlapping structures in the study ct urography is potential useful in patients having obstructive uropathy due to the causes other than uretic calculi though ultrasound still remains the primary investigation imaging modality of choice in identifying the grade of hydronephrosis ct urography has its own advantage uh, as it is able to evaluate the entire urinary system from kidney to urethra and is very helpful in uh, helpful tool in obese patient drawbacks are uh, radiation exposure risk of serious contrast reactions pregnant women are contraindicated with this study as risk of potential risk to the fetus again ct urography is becoming the primary method for evaluating many patients with obstructive uropathy with many diagnostic advantages and it is now replacing the intravenous urography intravenous urography there is no enough evidence to suggest the efficacy of ct urography is at par with that of existing uh, investigation can be considered as a gold standard for evaluation of obstructive uropathy these are my references thank you